Draymond Green and Kevin Durant were teammates on a super team so super it threatened to ruin the league. They won lots of accolades and a couple of championships together. But with one teammate being more than a little insecure and one teammate being more than a little outspoken, there were some bumps in the road too. One of which may have just influenced the future of the franchise. Draymond Green is an emotional, passionate, assertive player. As a rookie in 2013, he didn't let the fact that he was a second round pick keep him from talking a little trash to Kevin Durant, who was coming off a finals appearance. Not to say that was a point of beef between these two, it didn't bother Katie, it just surprised him. I bring it up simply to say Draymond isn't afraid to get in anyone's face. Green's loud passion bolstered him as he grew into a three-time champion all-star who served as the beating heart, the emotional leader of the dynastic warriors. Not bad. Now, sometimes his emotions got the better of him, like in 2016 when he screamed at coach Steve Kerr so loudly reporters outside the locker room could hear. Or later in 2016 when he got suspended for game five of the finals because he had accumulated too many flagrant fouls two of which were groin shots, I feel like that's important to include. Because it's funny, and because it illustrates that sometimes Draymond is... too much. Alongside Draymond in the front court, we have Kevin Durant, one of the best, if not the best, basketball player on the planet. But for all his talent, he's still shown some insecurity at points in his career. You know what they say, it's not easy at the top. And while I've always thought they've said that to keep me down and docile, Kevin Durant proves them correct. After nearly defeating the Warriors with OKC in the 2016 Western Conference Finals, Durant joined the champion Warriors in the offseason, creating an imbalance in the league. Instead of sticking with the underdog that was still a finals contender, he joined the team that held the dog's head underwater. KD was soundly criticized for the decision. It was considered a cop-out, tantamount to cheating. Fans burned his jersey and they likened him to a cupcake both being soft and delicate. And KD got insecure. He couldn't really handle the criticism. I'm not trying to be an armchair psychologist, I'm just trying to put words to what happened next. Kevin Durant used a burner account to pretend to be a random person defending Kevin Durant. Fair to say, this guy takes criticism pretty hard. So, starting in the 2017 season, we've got a very talented but insecure guy and a very talented but sometimes too passionate guy as teammates. How'd it go? Well, in January of their first season together, Green yelled at Durant when he missed a contested three at the end of a close game. And Durant accepted the critique. Maybe he felt bad about missing the three. Maybe he felt like a new guy who should listen to his new team's emotional leader. Either way, the whole thing ended with a double high-five, so no big deal. About a month later, KD had a bad game, he shot 2 for 10, and Draymond again yelled at the superstar. This time, KD stood up for himself, and leaned over for himself, too. This certainly looked, smelled, and tasted like beef. You've got teammates getting between them and everything. But on Snapchat, Draymond said it wasn't a story. He's saying blah 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 to the Bleacher Report article, not Postmates. I bet his Postmates order was incredible. He's rich and he needs lots of calories for sports. I'm positive there was nothing blah about that order. The Warriors weren't harmed by the star's spat. They finished the 2017 season 67-15, and 15, lost just one game in the playoffs, and took home another championship. Now, here's something interesting. The following season, there was some evidence that KD saw Draymond's criticisms as constructive rather than something to get upset about. In May, they lost Game 3 of the Western Conference Semis. KD didn't play great. In the middle of the night, Draymond sent Durant a, quote, long-ass text, in which he did not hold back, telling KD he needed to step it up. KD responded with a simple, I got you. And while a three-word reply to a long text message is usually the sign of a brush-off, it wasn't. It was genuine. Durant went on to score 38 points in the Game 4 win. Who could have thought the guy with burner accounts could respond to criticism so well? Oh, and by the way, the Warriors went on to repeat in 2018. They looked like they were going to run the league for a long time. Although, one thing, that summer KD signed a contract that gave him slightly less money in exchange for the option to leave the very next offseason. And there was a lot of talk he was going to take that option. 
On a different team, he could be the primary playmaker instead of just a very valuable piece of the offense. And not to be overlooked, winning a championship with a non-super team might silence all the hate he got for joining up with the Warriors. From the very start of the 2019 season, there was tons of KD free agency buzz. The press loved asking him about it, and teams loved making overtures to him. Some felt KD egged on the stories, or at least didn't do anything to shut them down, which was kind of a selfish move. The buzz surrounded not just him, but his entire team. The Warriors were in a constant state of unease, needing to court him while thinking about what to do if he didn't return. Clay Thompson and Draymond Green were going to be free agents shortly after Durant, and now they had to field questions about what they'd do if KD left. But Golden State said the free agency frenzy wasn't a distraction as they vied for a potential three-peat. And by mid-November, they were 11-2, so yeah, they're fairly focused. But resentment was brewing. On November 12th, KD and Draymond got in another on-court shouting match, but this one was a little different. The earlier incidents all started with Draymond criticizing KD. This one started with KD criticizing Draymond. And that was too much for Draymond Green. Let's go to the videotape. The Warriors were tied with the Clippers in the final seconds. Draymond grabbed a rebound that KD certainly thought he was about to catch. Draymond then either ignored or didn't see KD clapping madly for the ball and took it up court himself, where he proceeded to fall down as time expired. Then the yelling happened. KD told Draymond to pass him the fucking ball. Draymond took offense at being told what to do like a scrub, and he reminded KD he wasn't a scrub. In fact, he won a championship before KD got to Golden State, remember? As if Durant could ever forget. Draymond also called Durant a bitch several times and brought up one more subject, Durant's free agency. This wasn't exactly constructive criticism. Unlike their arguments in the past, this one carried into the locker room after the game. Green laid into Durant, accusing him of perpetuating the free agency media circus. Ladies and gentlemen, this time, we've got beef. That night, GM Bob Myers and Steve Kerr met with Green and told him to apologize. Draymond doesn't like being told what to do, as we've just seen, and he did not agree to apologize. So, Kerr and Myers suspended him without pay for one game. This was a surprisingly harsh punishment. In 2016, when Draymond screamed at Kerr, he was just privately fined a couple thousand dollars, and that was it. But something as public as a suspension? That was going to make waves. The media, fans, and Draymond himself felt the team just sided with Durant. The next night, Durant was asked if he was surprised by the suspension and didn't give the media an inch. I was just focused on the game. I didn't really care either way. Um, I was just focused on trying to come out here and finish this back to back off. Though he did admit he and Draymond hadn't made up yet. Hey Kevin, have you and Draymond been able to hash anything out? No. In fact, Draymond later said Durant might have blocked his number. This beef had implications on the future of the franchise. Was the fight so severe KD would leave? Were the Warriors trying to recruit Durant by taking his side? Was this an effort to set up Draymond as the scapegoat when Durant inevitably left in the summer? Had the Warriors just alienated Green, who would become a free agent himself in 2020? Were the Warriors even the Warriors anymore? This was a team that was built on unselfish play. Their motto was strength in numbers. And now an argument about who got the last shot was unraveling them? Three days later, Green and KD finally talked. Seemed the onus of making up was on Draymond. He accepted responsibility for going too far, said he supported Durant no matter his free agency decision, and insisted the team would be just fine. Which they absolutely were. Golden State finished 57-25 and and rolled through the playoffs to the finals. They didn't win at all, but KD had a devastating injury in Game 5. A couple weeks after losing the finals, KD signed with the Brooklyn Nets. There was speculation he left Golden State because he was jealous of homegrown hero Steph Curry or because he wanted to prove he could get a ring without a super team, but Durant claimed a couple different reasons for leaving. One, he never felt totally included with the Warriors. He wasn't jealous, but he felt like an outsider. And his second reason? That'd be the fight with Green. Draymond didn't buy that at all. 
He was sure if KD wanted to leave because of him, the Warriors would have said goodbye Draymond real quick. After all, they'd taken Durant's side once before. But in his comments, Draymond was careful not to fuel more beef. In the same breath he essentially called KD a liar, he said he loved him. About a year later, Draymond was a guest on Durant's podcast, but it wasn't some big showdown. They were affable, relaxed, and made us wait nearly an hour into the podcast before even addressing the fight. Host Eddie Gonzalez made it very clear it was no longer a sore subject. Y'all have reconciled. Y'all have buried the hatchet. Y'all have had conversations. Green's position was, this fight could have blown over like the others, but management and the media made it into a bigger deal than it was. It was their fault. He's kind of ignoring that the argument spilled into the locker room and got pretty personal, but fine, fine, fine. KD agreed management and the media blew it up, but he also got on record that Draymond crossed a line during the argument, though he wasn't trying to harp on the issue. He went too far in one of his little joints. A couple weeks later, KD went on Draymond's show and said definitively he did not leave because of what Draymond said during the fight, but because of management's reaction. It wasn't the argument, it was the, the way that everybody, Steve Kerr, act like it didn't happen. Bob Myers and tried to just discipline you and think that that would put the mask over everything. Now, that's a little different from what he originally said when he left the Warriors, but if that's the line he's taken now, if they're going to go on each other's shows and be pals and laugh, then that's the reality we live in. Just don't let them fool you. There was real beef here. Even if it was just one argument over one final shot, even if outside forces heightened it, and even if they've since put it behind them. What's up, everybody? Thank you for watching. And may I suggest watching more stuff? We've got more KD Warriors. We've got more beef. We've got everything you need. Don't forget to subscribe. I love you, and I'll see you real soon. For Secret Base, I'm Clara Morris. Good night and good game.